So there's been quite a lot of chat online about how people are doing remote eye gaze assessments. So I thought I would show you how I'm doing it. Okay. So what I've set up here is I've set up TeamViewer, which is a way to connect to other people's computers. And TeamViewer, first of all, um, it allows you to connect via video using the webcam in the top of the iGaze device. And so Alison here is, uh, has volunteered to be my uh, patient for today. And um, she, this video stream here is coming from the webcam that's at the top of the iGaze device, not the camera itself. If I want to see Alison using the iGaze camera, then uh, I can have a look on here. So this box here is um, an image of her screen on her own computer that's with her, uh, obviously just on TeamViewer. The software that I'm running is the Grid 3. And if I go to the eye gaze here, I can see a video of her, so I can see her eyes. So what I can do is I can have a good look at her eyes to make sure that um, they're going to be suitable for eye gaze, that they're not too dry, and that she's got uh, good movement in both eyes, and that the pupils are the right size. Um, if I didn't have this video system, that would be really difficult for me to do, because if we look at the image over here with the webcam, it's quite obviously quite difficult to clearly see what her eyes are like. So this is really useful. I did notice before I went to the video, if I go back to the positioning guide, that Alison's probably a little bit far back. So if I could ask you just to come forward a little bit. Okay, yep, and then I'll have a look at the video. Yeah, I think that's better. So on here, these green uh, crosses represent the fact that the eye gaze has found the center of your pupil which I'm very pleased with on both sides. And this little white dot uh, that's near the cross is the reflection from your cornea. So that's the infrared light bouncing back. And they're the things that we really need for eye gaze to work. Your glasses actually have a lot of reflections on them around the frames, which may cause uh, an issue. The camera may get confused by that. And if that happens, we might ask you to take the glasses off or try different different type of glasses with different frames, something like that. Um, but I'm now just going to check to see how well your eyes move together. So I'm going to ask you to look right, and then left, and then I want you to look up and down. Great. Okay, so I can see that your eyes are both working very well together. So I don't have to make any modifications. It might be that if you had one dominant eye and the other eye wasn't moving the same, we could just use the camera settings down here to just track one eye instead of both eyes. Um, but that's working well. Okay, um, the other thing I'm just going to ask you to do, Alison, is I'm going to ask you to just have a look at the bottom left corner of the screen. The bottom right corner of the screen. The top left corner of the screen. And the top right corner of the screen. So that shows us here just how much eye movement is required to use this device, which is actually not that much. And you'll see at all those points the, uh, the pupil could be seen. Uh, what's also really useful in this image is we can see that there's no obfuscation of the pupil with the top eyelid or the, or the bottom eyelid. Um, that does happen sometimes, and if that does happen, then you can just um, get the camera to follow one eye, because often some people will have like ptosis, which is a covering of the eye in one eye, but not in the other. So, but anyway, that's all working fine. So now we have to calibrate the camera to your eyes. So if it's all right, Alison, it's, the camera's gonna come up with nine points and I just need you to follow them as best you can with your eyes, okay? Okay, we're good to go. So in this image over here, I can keep an eye on Alison as she's doing this. Just to, just, I can just about see her eye movements. Um, and I also can keep an eye out for any other reflections, like if somebody walks behind and peers in. I can also see if Alison's moving her head a lot, because some people try and use their head to use eye gaze, which sometimes isn't very helpful. We've come to an end. So you've done very well there. You've got a good score. So um, I'm going to go... Okay, so we're based on your calibration... I'm going to set the dwell time here to 1.3 seconds. So each button that you look at 
each letter will take 1.3 seconds to activate, okay? Um, I'm also going to put on a little dot that will follow around the screen. The little dot might be a bit annoying for you, Alison, but it's to help me see where you're looking, or at least where the computer thinks you're looking, because some parts of the screen may be more accurate than others. So before we do any typing, we'll just check that accuracy using the dot. Okay, so I'm going to OK that. So I want you to start by looking at the G in the middle of the screen. Hold your gaze there. So that's really nice and accurate, that little grey dot's exactly where we want it to be. Okay, now I want you to have a look at the L on the other side. That's nice. As long as it's inside this blue, the, the larger light blue square, that's fine. Uh, have a look at the A on the other side. So have a look right in the middle of the A letter. So this maybe is not quite so accurate, so we could perhaps try and recalibrate, or we could have a look at something else, or maybe change the position of the camera. That's really nice, okay? The space bar in the middle, can you have a look right in the middle of the A, in the middle of the space bar? Okay, and then I want you to go up to the word the in the prediction. Great. Okay, try and have a look at the word the, right in the centre there. Okay, Alison, that looks pretty accurate, so I'm just going to turn the grey dot back off again. The grey dot has got its pros and cons. Um, it can really help if you're struggling to get good accuracy, but it can also be a bit uh, interfering because it's quite hard not to look at. So we'll keep with one and a half sec, 1.3 seconds. And um, what I'm gonna ask you to do, so in a minute, well, when I say, I'd, I'd like you to have a look at the rest button and then type in a short message for me, please. Okay. Now. Yes, please. You can use the prediction cell there if you want. Great. Do you want to read the message out by going to the speech bubble? Great. Thank you very much, Alison.